Understandest thou what thou readest in the King James Version? We're going to look at a false friend that was sent to me by a viewer, a true friend that I want to tell you about. After that, we'll look in detail at this very interesting false friend. And then I have a few thoughts about how to lovingly and carefully diminish the power of the divisive doctrine of King James onlyism and what you can do to help. That will be at the end of the video. Let's start where I always like to start. Tell me what you think this false friend means. It's the phrase, so that. Here's one King James Version verse where it is a false friend, a misleading mismatch between Elizabethan and contemporary Englishes. This is from Solomon's famous temple dedication prayer in 1 Kings 8. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. What does so that mean in this verse? Or rather, what would you have assumed so that means here if I hadn't just told you it's a false friend? Pause the video now, please, and tell me in the comments what you assume so that meant in this verse. It's been nothing short of absolute delight to have just a few people really catch on to the idea of false friends in the King James Version and the methodology I've taught for finding them. People all assume I have some master list of false friends. I don't. I've never felt comfortable using my personal Bible reading time to go through the King James Version looking for false friends. It seemed like a bad reason to read the Bible. I just stumble across them as I happen to check the King James Version or I have them sent to me. This one in this video was sent to me by an especially important friend. I had never noticed it until he sent it. A few years ago, I picked up this friend somehow on Goodreads, the social media network for readers. I didn't know him personally. He also contacted me through my blog to ask me a question if I remember right. So I took a look at the books that he'd been reading on Goodreads. They were excellent sound and skillful and deep authors, good stuff. He was a graduate of a four-year King James-only Bible college who was serving on the mission field with a King James-only mission board. And yet I could just tell by looking at those books that he wasn't long for the King James-only world. Those books I knew just don't get read in that world. We had already hit it off well enough that I told him this. You aren't gonna last within King James-onlyism, I said. Sure enough, the time came soon when I had to help my friend through the pain and difficulty of honoring and loving his friends and teachers while rejecting their most beloved distinctive doctrine, KJV onlyism. He showed no bitterness at any point that I could detect. And this is a theme among the many people I've talked to who've left King James onlyism. I've been amazed at this. They have been grateful to the Lord for the good they received at KJV only churches and institutions as I am, but they have had to leave King James onlyism behind because it is not taught in scripture. A major theme of my counsel to these young men, and they're always, always men under the age of 40, is that they should indeed show no bitterness, but trust the goodness of God in their life stories. And here's something I've often seen in these men. They were given some genuinely good things within King James onlyism, things to be grateful for, like a zeal for evangelism and for the holiness without which none of us will see the Lord. They were made to memorize lots of verses. They read their Bibles. They were kept away from life-harming temptations. They stayed sexually pure and they married faithful wives. But their time studying at King James only institutions usually also kept them from some good things, especially advanced study in Greek and Hebrew. That's because those schools typically do not encourage students to go on to seminary where you can really dig into those languages. But the good was still there. This particular young man really distinguished himself for his thoughtfulness, grace, and diligence. We've become good friends, and I hope to meet him in person someday. I started to pray for him as I saw that his departure from King James onlyism was imminent. I never encourage people to stay within KJV-only institutions if they've come by God's grace to know better. My own pastor growing up often pointed to Proverbs 11.3, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. It isn't right to pretend to be King James only in order to keep your job. At the very least, I tell these young men, they must speak to their leadership and tell them where they're at. 
My friend did this at the right time and in the right way. The Lord allowed him an honorable discharge without personal conflict. I've got people watching my videos who want that kind of honorable discharge from King James Onlyism. And I've asked this godly, wise, and careful friend of mine to help me help you. If indeed you need outside advice for how to leave King James Onlyism in a godly and not a bitter, disaffected way, talk to me. Contact me through my blog contact form. I'm praying for you, and I can help you as I have helped others. Now on to today's false friend. This true friend of mine noticed one day that there was a place in the King James that said, so that, where the Christian Standard Bible had something very different, kind of the opposite, in fact. For that verse that I already read from Solomon's Temple Dedication Prayer, the Christian Standard Bible says this, Therefore, Lord God of Israel, keep what you promised to your servant, my father David. You will never fail to have a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only, and this is where the King James has so that, if only your sons take care to walk before me as you have walked before me. And that's step one in my false friends process. We've noticed that another English translation has something rather different from the King James Version. The King James appears to make living holy lives the result of God's choice of David's line to sit on the throne. He chose them so that they would lead holy lives. The CSB makes living holy lives a condition for David's sons to sit on that throne. He chose them, if only they will lead holy lives. If you're a really, really attentive reader of the King James, you might pick this up through contextual conflict instead of by noticing that different translations go different ways here. I wasn't that reader, and neither was my diligent, intelligent friend. It would take a superhumanly good reader to notice that, indeed, it is a little strange for Solomon to say, so that here, if so that means what we mean by so that. You will never fail to have a son of David sitting on the throne, so that, in order that, with the result or purpose that, your sons will live holy lives. How does that follow? It didn't, in fact, follow. The sons of David did not live holy lives, and they had to be cast from that throne. The son of David now sits on it, but only because he's divine and undid the failures of all his merely human predecessors. Okay, so step two of my process is to look up the original language words in a responsible lexicon. We'll turn to the Old Testament equivalent of BDAG, the top Old Testament lexicon, Halot, the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament. This is one of the more difficult reference works I own. I'm more of a New Testament Greek guy than an Old Testament Hebrew guy, but I tunneled through the entry on this two-word phrase, which is rock im, and this is what halot says it means. Given that, if only. They give three example verses, one of which is this verse that we've been looking at in 1 Kings 8 from Solomon's Temple Dedication Prayer. Let's look at the other two examples for some help. The first is in Deuteronomy 15, 4 through 5. We'll actually look at the King James Version here. There shall be no poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. That's how the King James translators translate this Hebrew phrase, only if. And clearly, that's what it has to mean. Carefully hearkening to God's voice and observing all his commandments is the condition for retaining title to their God-given land. 2 Kings 21.8 is pretty much exactly the same. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them. So, to be clear, the King James translators translated this Hebrew phrase, rock im, as so that in 1 Kings 8.25, but as only if in these two other places. To be even clearer, as usual, I think they made no error, but it remains for me to explain how that could be the case when if only and so that might seem to be opposites, as indeed in our English they are. Step three in our process is to look up the English words in a contemporary dictionary. Merriam-Webster says that so that now means what that means in sense 2a1. Follow me. Expressing purpose or desired result. And they give this example sentence from W.B. Yeats. Cutting down expenses that her son might inherit an unencumbered estate. The American Heritage Dictionary also says that the phrase means with the result or purpose or consequence that such and such will occur. The new Oxford American Dictionary that comes on every Mac also gives with the result that. 
This is precisely what I expected. It's the only way I've ever used or heard the phrase, so that. It's the only way you have ever used or heard the phrase, too. So let's go to step four and look up the phrase in the Oxford English Dictionary, my beloved OED. It most certainly records the same sense for this phrase that we saw in our contemporary English dictionaries, the ones that describe our language as it is now. The OED says that the phrase can denote result or logical consequence. It says that it is equivalent to in order that. And it says that this use of the phrase is very, very old, going back to the old English days. It cites Beowulf, in fact. English speakers have been saying so that to indicate result or purpose for a long, long time. And indeed, it's important to point out that so that could mean in 1611 what it means today, result, purpose, consequence. It usually means this in the King James Version. Its very first appearance in Genesis 13 means this. Their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And here's the second instance. I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. But the Oxford English Dictionary records a sense of the phrase, so that, that will solve our dilemma and reveal, you guessed it, a false friend. So that, in limiting sense, on condition that, provided that, so long as, if only. This is perfect. It fits the Hebrew. It fits the context of 1 Kings 8. And yet, I would argue, we don't use this sense of the phrase so that anymore. It doesn't show up in any of the three contemporary dictionaries I checked. I couldn't find it in the News on the Web corpus, though I admit I wearied of that task quickly as I saw that over and over again, so that meant in order that. I'll also admit that the OED does not mark this sense of so that as archaic or obsolete. But the last use it records comes from 1859. And I took my nerdiness to extreme levels this time by going and checking the first edition of the OED from back in 1913, 107 years ago. The entry for this sense is essentially unchanged in the most recent edition. And the entry actually notes this. A few citation dates were corrected in the OED edition I have now, but all the citations are exactly the same. None is added, none is missing. I would argue that the OED lexicographers, when they next get around to revising this sense of the phrase so that, will need to mark it as obsolete. I don't think anyone will get the intended meaning of the King James translators unless they happen to check the Hebrew or check other translations, in which case they may actually think that the King James translators made a mistake when they didn't. This is a false friend that materially changes the meaning of the verses in which it appears. It makes them close to nonsensical. And again, it isn't the King James translator's fault. It's the fault of language change over the last four centuries. We just don't have that sense of so that anymore. Second Chronicles 33.8 in the King James Version reads, Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. This is a specific kind of covenantal promise, a conditional one. And that's important to the theology of the Old Testament. The people of Israel will remain in their land if only, provided that they obey. This is the Old Covenant, not the New. There was grace in that Old Covenant. God picked these people alone among all the nations of the earth to be recipients of His special blessing. But that Old Covenant did not provide the power to obey as our new covenant does, a covenant enacted on better promises through the death of our great mediator, a covenant that gives us new hearts. There is still an expectation of holiness that comes in the new covenant. We ought to look at these conditional promises God made to the Israelites and fear, lest we ourselves come short of the promise. But we can also rest in the assurance that not only do we have an advocate with the Father when we sin, but we have the paraclete, the comforter, who abides in us and produces holiness in us. This is something the members of the Old Covenant couldn't all bank on. All this is clear enough, even in the King James as a whole, certainly. People who read the King James Version can still see these things outside these particular so that passages. And they have and they do. But the little phrase, so that, is like static being played at little during an audiobook. It's like a sign beside the King James Version road that was hit by a truck and got swiveled around, pointing in the wrong direction. It is, in short, a false friend. I hope now thou understandest what thou readest in the King James a little better. And one more little note to end on for those who love their King James-only brothers and wish to help those who are overtaken in a fault, as I do. 
I've started to get this question from nobody. How can we support this channel? And I want to tell you clearly, I don't need your money. I don't want your money. This channel is a gift given out of a heart of love to the church. But I think the time has come for me to ask for the three things that everybody on YouTube asks for. Likes, shares, and subscriptions. I've avoided this kind of thing for over a decade. I don't do it on my blog either because I don't like self-promotion. But I've decided that on YouTube, the best way I can serve others with my work is if it gets out to more of my brothers and sisters. So if you want to end the division created by King James Onlyism, please do like, share, and subscribe. The divisive doctrines of King James Onlyism will probably never go away. The church's history with the Latin Vulgate shows that it's a perennial temptation for people to invest the authority of perfection and of trust in a translation rather than in the originals that God inspired. People don't like to have to trust imperfect translators. They want a perfect Bible in their own language. I cannot follow my King James only brothers in this desire because God has not told us to expect perfect Bible translations. I think after many years of prayer and effort, reaching out to my King James only brothers, that the only way King James onlyism will be diminished is if I can appeal to extremely important common ground I share with the vast majority of King James only Christians. We want to understand our Bibles. King James only Christians don't see clearly that what they're doing is treating a translation as if it's perfect. They especially don't see clearly that language change has done more to the King James than just pull some of its words out of our common speech, be some chambering emerald. They don't understand the full effects of language change on our ability to understand the King James Version. They do, and I know this because I sat under their teaching as a teenager, they do want to read and understand their Bibles. They taught me to want this too, and I will forever be grateful to them. The leaders of King James Onlyism cannot get away with suggesting a move to the more understandable contemporary English of the New King James Version even though it's based on the same Hebrew and Greek texts as the King James. Moving to the New King James would kill their churches and schools, split them right down the middle or worse. Their constituents would revolt. So we have to reach those constituents. We have to reach the regular churchgoers in King James only churches. And I can't really do that. I'm not reaching them. I am reaching young pastors in that world. I've heard from literally hundreds of them, but I'm not reaching the people in the pew. I think you can reach them. You can share my absolutely free YouTube videos with your King James only brother-in-law. You can say in love, hey, I never realized that so that meant something different in the King James than it means today. Check this out. He won't be able to engage you on textual criticism. He'll just retreat to trusting the people he already trusts. But he does want to understand what God says. He'll be curious to know what so that means. And maybe he'll watch a few other videos and learn about some more false friends. If you and I can plant the concept of false friends in his mind, over time he'll start to notice more of them. The edifice of King James Onlyism, the edifice that walls him off from you and the rest of conservative Christianity will shake a little, and I pray it will one day fall, so that we can have unity again with our erring brothers. If only, if only.